In this video, we're going to be establishing who the best GMs are for GM mode in WWE 2K22, so you know which GM you should be picking for your next save and which ones you should be avoiding as well. The only difference between each GM is the power card that they give you at the start. So what we're going to be doing is we're going through each of these power cards, we're going to establish which ones are good, which ones aren't really worth it, and it should be a nice quick video, so let's get stuck straight into it right now. Okay, so as you can see on screen, we have the default five GM options, Adam Pearce, Sonia Deville, William Regal, Shane McMahon, Stephanie McMahon, and I absolutely apologize if I'm pronouncing any of these names wrong. It seems to be a talent that I have. And I've also loaded in a custom superstar who I've called Naomi McSuperstar, obviously, and any of you can load in a custom superstar. All you have to do is create a custom superstar at the main menu, and you can load it in here. Every single one of your custom superstars will get this same power card called Beginner's Luck. We'll get to that later. And I'm really regretting calling him McSuperstar now because I think I've just said the word superstar about 20 million times in 10 seconds. Let's go to Adam Pierce, and we're going to go through these one by one. As I've hopefully already said, the only difference between these GMs is the power card you get. So all we need to do is establish which power cards are good, which power cards are bad, and then you know which GMs you can pick between basically and then all it is is about establishing which GM is the best overall. So Adam Pierce, he gets the instigator card and what the instigator card does is it increases the levels of all active rivalries by one. If you're not yet familiar with the rivalry system basically it goes from no level all the way up to level four. If fighters have higher rivalries between them then you're more likely to get higher rated shows which brings you in more fans makes you more money etc etc once rivalries reach level four and you fight them at pay-per-view that automatically ends the rivalry so those two fighters or four fighters if it's a tag team rivalry will not be able to be rivals after that pay-per-view for a little while anyway you'll need to put them in other fights and try and get some other rivalries elsewhere but rivalries can also go stale so if they reach level four and you fight them too many times before pay-per-view that rivalry can go stale the fans can get bored of it likewise rivalries can disappear you might call out the wrong person you might put someone in a title fight and it might change the rivalries around but let's say you're resting a wrestler someone needs a bit of rest they've got low stamina they've got a level two rivalry by the time they are fully fit again you might have actually lost that rivalry just because they've not fought in a while they've not called each other out manage these rivalries is really important. This instigator card that increases the levels of all active rivalries by one. Honestly, even though I've not played with Adam Pierce yet, I think this is a pretty good power card. Managing the active rivalries is incredibly difficult. This is especially true later on in the season. Let's say you're a week out from WrestleMania and you could just boost every single rivalry by one. That is pretty huge in my opinion because what this means is you can give fighters a bit of rest if they absolutely need it. You can boost everyone up, get them all to level four going into WrestleMania or as close to level four as possible. I think this is certainly one of the better power cards and we're going to put Adam Pierce on our shortlist of the best GMs. Next up we have Sonya Deville. A superstars GM is the name of her power card, and what this does is it raises the entire roster's morale by plus 15. If you don't know what morale is, morale is basically how happy a fighter is, how positive they're feeling, and if their morale drops too low, then they're more likely to start wanting to leave your organization or your brand, and they're more likely to start making stupid demands and things like that. It's pretty annoying to have low morale. However, I'm not gonna cover this one for too long. I think morale in this game is incredibly easy to manage. It's easy with little tricks that you can do. For example, what if you've got someone who is demanding a title fight, but you already have a good rivalry going between the title holder and someone else? Well, what you can do is you can just put the title holder in a title fight with the guy that has requested the fight, and then you can schedule a run-in on the champion by the wrestler that has the active rivalry with him. What this does is it satisfies the demands of the person wanting the title fight, and it also keeps the rivalry going between the other two fighters as well because they've ran in on each other. And as long as you don't schedule that fight as an extreme rules fight, the fight will end in a disqualification, which means the title will not change hands. Because money isn't really an issue in this game later on in longer seasons, talking 50 weeks in particular, but 25 weeks as well, money isn't so much of an issue. You can give in to just giving people the bonuses that they demand. It's easy to rotate people, keep your promises, even if you break 
make promises, it really isn't that hard to just keep them satisfied. I think I've only had one fighter leave me in all of the saves that I've played so far. So in my opinion, this is not a good card. Compared to some of the bonuses that the other ones give you, I am not sold on this and I'm immediately removing Sonya from our shortlist. In fact, I would say she may well be the worst GM. Um, but we've got other ones to look at too, so we'll establish that later in the video. Next up, we've got William Regal. His Legend Whisperer power card gives you the ability to sign a legend for free. How much money this saves you uh, it's hard for me to comment on because it does seem that if you're playing a 15 week season and if you're playing a 50 week season the prices are different i don't know if i'm 100 percent correct in saying that but at least from my observations it seems that the prices uh, are different obviously because in a 15 week season you're not going to need to keep renewing their contracts as often because the season will be over in a 50 week season you're going to have to renew them a lot so it seemed like they were a little bit cheaper in the 50 weeks because you're going to have to renew them so often correct me on that in the comments if i am wrong because uh, that was just a brief observation I've made and I haven't actually tested to see if this is 100% correct. This Legend Whisperer card I think is pretty good. You're going to definitely want to sign a Legend on a 10-week contract rather than a 5-week because you're just wasting 5 weeks. It's free. So why would you sign a five-week fighter when you could get a 10-week one? You're going to get someone that's five stars locked in. You can get high popularity. You can look at high stamina as well. And they're pretty much guaranteed to make good fights. Early on in the season, this card is a huge advantage. And you don't have to sign them in the first week if there isn't a legend there that is a good matchup for you. You can wait. However, the value in this card is in using it early. You want to use it to start to get an advantage over your opponent as soon as you possibly can. I think this card is really good, potentially the best card. So we're going to be putting William Regal on the shortlist of the best GMs to pick. Next up, we have Shane McMahon, and he has the Coast to Coast power card. And the Coast to Coast power card gives a bonus. So if you book a GM interference, it will provide an additional plus two show bonus, and it will be free to book this week. GM interferences aren't expensive, so the fact that it's free to book isn't really worth anything, in my opinion. Obviously, it is worth something, but only a very small amount. What you're really getting from this is the additional plus two show bonus. Is that better or worse than signing a legend for free or getting a plus one on all your active rivalries? I don't think so. I don't think it's terrible, so I'm not saying it's as bad as Sonya's card with the morale boost, but I don't think Shane can be considered as one of the best GM based on this your additional plus two show bonus you're likely to get more show bonuses by having active rivalries or higher active rivalries so if we're looking at adam pierce's card if we're looking at william regal's card having legends fighting for free is is going to help boost your show performances as well this isn't a completely awful card by any means but i just don't think it's good enough in my opinion to put him up on the shortlist of the best and I've just accidentally selected him there, so let's back out and move on to Stephanie McMahon. I really hope I'm pronouncing that name right. I'm sure I'm probably not. The McMahon Presence is the name of her power card, and what this does is it means you earn twice as much money from arena attendance this week. Now, originally, I thought this was a very valuable card, especially going into 50-week seasons, and the reason for this is because you can get big arena. The biggest arena will get you like $150,000, I think, in ticket sales, it might even be more than that. The ability to double that is obviously worth a lot of money. However, once you start to get into those arenas, the, the biggest ones, even the, the second from biggest one, you're not in any danger really of making a loss on your shows and later on in seasons in a 50 week season you do not need money so this actually isn't a good card to be played later in the season if you play it earlier on in the season now you definitely don't want to be playing this in week one when you're in the school gym let's say you're playing it in like the second or third arena that you unlock it's worth a decent amount of cash but if we compare it to william regal's card where you get to sign a legend for free the value of signing that legend is higher than the money you would save. So we're just going to pick some random figures here. These definitely aren't accurate. William Regal, you might be able to sign a legend that would cost you $70,000 for free. And with Stephanie McMahon, you might gain an extra $25,000 or an extra $50,000 by making more money from arena attendance. The actual trade-off is better for William. You're making more money or you're at least you're saving more money than you make with Stephanie. The other thing to bear in mind with that is that obviously if you sign a legend with William you are going to have to renew the contract of that legend if you want to keep them so that is going to cost you some money so you could argue that Stephanie's card is better because there are future costs lined up with the signing of the legend however that 
would assume that you're not going to be signing a legend with Stephanie, which just isn't true. You're definitely going to be signing legends either way. So getting the free one is clearly better, in my opinion, than this bonus. I don't think the double arena attendance is worth it. Just because the money to make it worth it is only really worth it at a point in the season where you don't even really need the money. So despite the fact that I think this is a decent card, I'm not going to be including her as one of the best GMs. Finally, McSuperstar, your own custom superstar. The beginner's look card raises the popularity of the superstar with the lowest popularity on your roster by plus 20. There are power cards in the game called To The Moon. What this To The Moon card does is it boosts popularity by 15 but they have to have 60 popularity or lower. So it's similar to this, but it's not quite the same. Now, what are my opinions on the beginner's look card? I think it is really good. Having an extra 20 popularity on your least popular wrestler is incredible. It means your draft, if you use it right at the start, immediately becomes a lot better. It means you could sign one of the worst free agents and immediately boost them to a really good fighter. You wouldn't even have to sign one of the worst ones, of course, or the cheapest ones. You could still sign one that is half decent that has popularity in the 50s let's say and boost it up to in the 70s this is a very good card the unfortunate thing with popularity is that it does drop off quite quickly when they're not involved in fights but if you use this at the right time i think it is incredibly valuable let's say you're going into wrestlemania and you've got no stamina on your fighters if four weeks out you need someone you're desperate and you put this on it's going to be very valuable Likewise, at the start of the season, I still think it's very valuable. You're going to start to get a big lead over your opponents because popularity of your fighters is so much better than your opponents, or it's likely to be at least, as long as you've drafted at a similar standard to what they have. So, in my opinion, the beginner's look card is good, and I would put the custom superstar on the shortlist of the best GMs. So, that means my final shortlist for the best GMs are Adam Pearce, William Regal, and custom superstar, aka Naomi superstar the only one in my opinion that you should absolutely avoid is Sonia Deville unless I'm missing something with morale I think it's terrible it's just a complete waste of a card you just don't need it maybe I'm missing something so if I am do let me know in the comments but as I say managing morale in this game has not been an issue for me whatsoever I think it's very easy to manage so I wouldn't go with Sonia Shane and Stephanie they're not amazing but they're certainly not terrible but yeah Adam William and your custom superstar in my opinion those are the best GMs. Those are the ones you should be picking in your season. If you're going for William, I would use the card straight away. Sign a legend in your first week. If you are Adam, I would definitely not use that card straight away. I would use it going into a pay-per-view, maybe even WrestleMania, when you're really needing to boost those rivalries to put on the best possible card you can. And if you're using a custom superstar, you've kind of got the choice of when you want to boost the popularity. You could do it straight away, or you could do it before a big pay-per-view. I really don't know when the best time to use it is, but I hope you found this video useful. I hope you found it interesting. If you have, do hit that like button. Let me know your thoughts or any questions you've got in the comments below, and I hope I can see you again in another video. Thanks for watching.